Hey, Ashley. How's it going? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Cool. Well, thanks for calling. Because you do have a lot going on right now. (laughs) (laughs) Schedule's been a bit crazy. Uh, We just finished uh, shooting at uh, at Red Rocks, and um, I think that was the biggest... uh, the biggest responsibility of the tour so far, but uh, it's just the beginning, so we still got a lot to go. Right. So all of your songs that you perform, well, most of them, come off your new album, King? Um, I would say it's, it's going to be a good mix of uh, uh, some new and some old, some really old, you know, just to satisfy uh, the different types of audience that we have. And, um, you know, some of the core fans know a lot of the old stuff, and mm-hmm. um, they're not so fond of the new stuff, and vice versa. Right, so this is your seventh studio album. Yes. That's crazy. You've done so much. Yeah. Um, I heard this song, Gotta Be Wrong, sometimes. I really love that one. Oh, thank you. And I I heard that you performed that on Rachel Ray. Yes, we did. Uh, We played an acoustic version that was just uh, Mark and uh, and Benj, myself. Mm -hmm. How'd that go? Was it fun? Yeah, it was great. You know, it's uh, it's one of those shows where they feed you really, really well. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and, you know, that, that doesn't always happen in this, on those talk shows. So. Yeah, I bet. That that was definitely a perk. Um, so did you guys write that from personal experience? I mean, everyone's got to be wrong sometimes. Are you guys ever wrong? <laughs> <laughs> or are you always um, right? Anyone who says they're never wrong, they're, they're liars. Right. Um, you know, I think it's just a song that, that everyone can relate to. You know, it, it's mm-hmm. something that, uh, you know, I think is, is, is common sense. But at the same time, uh, I think it's a good reminder for people to... To realize that you know um, we all make mistakes and um, you know don't don't dwell on them and you know and look for the future so definitely good advice so do you have a favorite song or as a as a group do you guys have a favorite song off the new album King man right now um, I'm really enjoying playing um, heaven heaven um, off, off the record yeah um, you know the, the arrangement for us was kind of a challenge to to try to pull off live because there's a lot of stuff going on on the studio version of the song. Um, but with our horn guys and uh, with our keyboard player um, and everybody singing back of vocals, we were able to kind of replicate um, the choir that's on the actual track. Um, there's just a lot of energy. There's a lot of fun. There's a great sax solo at the end. Uh, that's, that's my favorite tune right now. Okay, awesome. So you guys do, I mean, of course, you have your own music that you guys write, but you, um, the Gotta um, Champions you did with mm-hmm. B.O.B.? Mm-hmm. How did that come about? How how do you guys know B.O.B. or or was it through labels or do you know him personally? Uh, we didn't know him personally, um, but we knew that he fit exactly what we were looking for uh, for the song. Mm-hmm. And um, when we first submitted the song to Duracell, um, and that's how it all started. Is Duracell was looking for a song to use during their uh, for their Olympic campaign. Oh. They're one of the big sponsors for uh, the Olympics this year. Mm-hmm. And we submitted the song Champions, and um, it uh, they loved it. And um, we thought, who could do this verse justice uh, and do the song justice? And, mm-hmm. you know, B.O.B. is coming out with a record uh, in the summertime. It just made sense. Um, yeah. Just his image and, and, um, and the way he carries himself, we thought it would be a, a great mix. So we got in the studio together and uh, recorded his parts, yeah. and it turned out fantastic. So uh, we're really happy with it. Yeah, definitely. It definitely did. Um, you guys, I really love you guys because you do a lot with the community and with foundations. You have your Heard the World Foundation, um, your Green Dream I saw you have. Um, is there anything that drives you guys to do that or you're just really, really sweet people? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's both. Um, you know, I, I think we have a responsibility, especially when you're... You know, you're, you're 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 touring, and you have a lot of people on your on your team, and you kind of carry that load of um, cleaning up after your mess. You know, and, mm-hmm. and tours leave a huge carbon footprint just running through any city, uh, whether it's you know how many bottles are left behind and um, that aren't recycled, and uh, how much water you're using, and um, and you know running the generators for the buses. There's a lot of mm-hmm stuff going on during the tour and we want to minimize that carbon footprint as much as possible. Um, so uh, with working with Britta, um, who's a partner for the summer tour, mm-hmm. um, and also the Green Dream and the Hort Bowl Foundation, all, everything that you mentioned, uh, those are just things that you know we can do to kind of um, you know make our carbon footprint smaller and also uh, give back to the community. Awesome. Yeah, Heard the World is my favorite song ever. No. I love it. <laughs> Best one. 
Well, I mean, they're all great, but that's my personal favorite. <laughs> um, and then, I mean, back to, you know, helping out the community. Um, the song that you wrote with your Twitter followers, the mm-hmm. Light Switch guy, mm-hmm. uh, that was for Paralyzed Veterans, correct? Yes, yeah, um, that was the Paralyzed Veterans of America. Every um, time that song is purchased on iTunes, um, all the money goes through them. So uh, that's a great cause also. We've also um, been really involved with the military, and uh, I think the first time we went over to uh, play overseas, the USO, um, really kind of opened our eyes to how much support and help that um, our military needs, um, especially when they come back home and uh, they're trying to figure things out. And, um, you know, we, uh, we really welcome them, especially to any of our shows, um, for free. So. Oh. That's really nice. That's so cool. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, your typical questions. Did you do you have an inspiration or do you guys have specific bands that you look up to or aspire to kind of um, be like? I mean, I know you guys are sort of your own style, your own category, I feel like. Well, I think I think musically, you know, we all have different inspirational uh, um, artists who kind of you know, tuned our individual musical styles in in their own direction. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, for me, uh, The Cure was a huge influence on me. Mm -hmm. Um, Just melodically and how they could be so depressing. But but write such a beautiful song. Um, You know, for inspiration as far as, like, just wanting to be in a band, Pearl Jam was a huge influence on our band. Mm -hmm. Um, Not so much musically, but more of uh, the energy that they captured on stage and the chemistry between those guys, just watching them perform when we were in what, seventh and eighth grade, mm-hmm. uh, it literally blew our minds. And, you know, I'd have to give credit to them for making us want to be in a band. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think for inspiration, to, just to keep going, um, you know, I think um, obviously uh, our fans um, make us love what we do, but I think at the same time, I think we also inspire each other. We always try to push each other, whether it's musically or, um, you know, business-wise, to uh, mm-hmm. just to keep at it and um, to keep this thing going because uh, it, it, it's hard to be in a band and survive these days. Yeah, and I, like you said, the bands that you sort of uh, look up to and grew up with, you've seen them grow up from album to album and sort of change their feel. Of course, they mature as time goes on. Uh, is there anything specific? with this album that you guys believe you matured or that's different than your last album or... Yeah, I think every time we make a record, that, that's basically a snapshot of what's going on mm-hmm. in our, with our band right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, this record, uh, there's definitely a huge hip-hop influence on this record. Um, and I don't think that was planned. It was just more of us kind of trying to expand... Um, the type of tracks that we have in the studio and yeah. um, I think we've worked with a lot of drum machines and, and, um, and things of that nature that we, we weren't used to working with before and it really helped us open up our songwriting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it's crazy how different instruments and different sounds can inspire you to write new songs based on them. Uh, Heaven is a great example of that. Um, and um, yeah, I think, I think this record for us is definitely what's been going on with the band in, in, in recent years. and. Um, you know, for the next record, I'm not sure what it's going to sound like. Yeah. You know, we'll know when we sit down and start listening to the songs. And, you know, everyone brings songs to the table, and it kind of just starts shaping itself as we make the record. So. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's cool. Um, I actually put up on Twitter that I was going to interview got you guys today, and a bunch of fans um, mentioned the crazy game of poker song. Mm-hmm. They were like, ask them where they came up with those crazy, cool lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have a crazy story uh, for uh, those crazy lyrics. <laughs> um, you know, that song was one of the first songs we wrote. Um, and we were in high school. We were in Chris Close's basement, my drummer's basement. Uh, I mean, his mom's basement. He didn't own a house back then. Uh, <laughs> and none of us didn't. We didn't really own anything. Um, but, um, you know, the first half of the song, you know, we kind of looked at the song in two parts. You know, there's the first half, that's kind of the storytelling uh, it kind of has like this upbeat, um, almost countryish vibe to it, mm-hmm. uh, and then the second half is kind of like this halftime reggae broken down part of the song. Mm-hmm. Um, the first half was something that uh, Mark and Chris had been playing for, um, just jamming on before we were even a band. Mm-hmm. 
And I think they wrote that first half of the song when they were overseas studying abroad in Israel uh, in high school. Um, and then they came back and they played it for us and we used to jam that all the time. And then, man, I don't know how we broke into that reggae thing uh, <laughs> so long ago. Um, but, you know, there was something about the pulse of, of reggae music that um, really uh, that really gelled with us. And um, that second half of the song is, is like literally completely improvised. Really? Um, it wasn't written when we recorded it in the studio. We knew the first half, we played that, and we had no idea what was gonna happen in the second half. And Mark is literally just flipping the story off the top, off the top of his head. Um, <laughs> There's, there's a part in the song where he's like, I don't know what to say anymore. And literally, he was just like, you know, we kind of got to end this thing because, you know, I, I, I don't know where it's going. Um, and that's one of the reasons why the song is like eight, eight minutes long. Is because <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't know when it was going to end. That's and so we cool. It when Mark kind of, you know, improvised in his head, uh, we stand this song. Um, so that's the story. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's crazy that those lyrics kind of stuck with everybody and they resonated. Um, because at the time, Mark wasn't really sure what the lyrics meant. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times you write a song and you don't figure it out until after it's done. Yeah. Um, the meaning of the song. Well, they were genuine. They genuinely came from you guys. So that's probably why it sticks with so many people. Yeah. So I'm looking at the sheet right now. You have so many tour dates and stops and all that stuff. And, of course, you're going to be playing the crazy game of poker at all of them. But uh, the best stop ever, you're coming to Hartford, Connecticut. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Um, and you guys are actually performing on the Scion Festival stage. It's brand new. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So have you performed um, at the Comcast Theater before? Yes, we have. We've been there uh, a couple times. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we, we love playing there. It's just it's not a bad view in the house. And it's a great, great thing. Yeah, that is really cool. So that should be fun. Brand new stages are always really cool to perform on. We're excited to play there. Uh, we're excited to bring our show to, to Hartford. Uh, we got a great light show. Um, you know, a great horn section. It's just going to be a blast. Okay, perfect. Well, have a really awesome time in Connecticut. Can't wait to see you guys. And thank you so much for calling. Okay, thanks, Ashley. All right, have a good day.